All right, now I got myself unmuted. Thank you, Ray. You um, bet, man. A great panel of presenters today. Um, we, uh, as Ray said, I'm Lynn Rasmussen. I'm the district manager for the Nez Perce and Water Conservation District. There we go. Um, I titled ours moving out and um, I've been employed with the conservation district for 19 years. And so I came on when the district was growing and um, came involved in our controversial move out story that we'll talk about here in a little bit. A little bit about our district. We are one of 50 districts in the state of Idaho. The blue on the right represents our district. We are we're formed in 1941. We're the sixth district in the state that was formed. We have about 550,000 acres in our district. So we are geographically one of the smallest districts. However, we're unique in that we have three rivers in our district boundary, the salmon, the snake, and the clear water, which um, brings up water quality issues as well as Endangered Species Act for salmon, um, specifically sockeye, chinook, and steelhead. We have a seven member elected board and those are elected on the county ballot. Um, we service about 441 clients a year. We have six staff, two are full-time. The remaining are um, full-time or part-time um, staff that work in specialty areas. We have about a $2 million uh, budget annually, and our focus is mostly agricultural clients. Uh, district programs that we've um, developed since we moved out of a co-located facility is we do a lot of land use and conservation planning on all land uses and with multiple partners, not just private, but also uh, county and some state lands. We do a lot of watershed planning, which are really large scale coordinated uh, planning efforts to identify resource problems and then the suite of uh, projects that will uh, solve those problems. We do a lot of work with conservation implementation, meaning we hire the contractor, implement the project, or we hire labor crews to do the work. We developed a monitoring program, mostly with stream temperature, which is used by um, most of the federal agencies and the tribe and state agencies in our area for monitoring uh, water quality temperatures for steelhead trout. We have a vegetative management crew and that crew runs in the spring and the summer um, and the fall as well, where they do tree planting and then also weed control for our conservation projects. We've been able to establish a nursery and at first we sold our plants, but we are so busy now that we just use them to produce for our own projects. Um, we have an outreach program like many of you do. Um, we're able to do community events and then we have a newsletter and some um, social media. And then um, of course youth and adult education events. We do a lot of hazard mitigation planning and that's mostly related to either wildfire, flood or landslides in our area. And um, after a fire or a flood, we do a, what's called a post-fire flood assessment and inventory. And if you're used to forest service, it's kind of like a bear team. We'll coordinate that and come up with a response that we provide to the county commissioners to determine if there needs to be a disaster declaration. So our location, um, since 19, from 1941 to 2003, the district was co-located with USDA. They had a part-time administrative staff member during that time frame. And then the Endangered Species Act and came in to our area and there was a lot of funds and resources for helping private landowners uh, implement in-stream habitat restoration projects for, um, like I said, Chinook, Steelhead and, and, uh, and Sockeye. So from 2003 to 2012, we, rent, we rented and or res, resided in a donated space. So once we left the co-located facility, we actually um, resided in a grain elevator for a while that was donated to us from Prime Land, a local cooperative. And um, then after that, we rented a facility that was a retired um, a fertilizer plant. And then in 2013, the Conservation District Board approached the owner of that, which is McGregor Company, and asked them if they would donate the building to the district. And um, they looked at that and the owner of that company decided that they could donate part of the value and the rest of the district would have to buy. So we purchased it for $45,000. Um, and we have about a 7,000 square foot facility with a shop, uh, office space, uh, several outbuildings. And then we also lease some of that space to others. So from 2013 to 2022, we've owned the facility. And the pictures down here kind of show uh, what that facility looks like. And just kind of an interesting fact, when we got this, it was pretty run down and all of the metal on the side was different colors. And so we ended up with a summer crew member that had been on a painting crew and we rented scaffolding and bought the paint and he painted the whole building one summer. So now it looks consistent and more professional. 
And so why did we move out from USDA? A couple of factors uh, kind of combined to cause that. One was in growth in Lewiston, which is the major city where the office was located, uh, increased competition for office space. At the same time, USDA was leasing out or bidding out their space, and they reduced us from 700 square feet to 100 square feet. And um, we have a lot of incompatible uses. Basically, there was some uh, controversy with between the district staff and the USDA staff on the amount of soil or biological products we brought into the office. We had fish samples, soil samples and plant samples, and that didn't kind of mix well with the office setting that we were in. Then um, USDA also put a lot of restrictions on parking. Our staff couldn't park there, nor our equipment. We have four vehicles, six trailers, a hydro seeder, and a lot of water tanks. Um, we couldn't use the space for certain activities, and the hours of use was restricted also, and then secure, security protocols were hard for us to meet. Um, so then the district started looking for space. We had a $22,000 budget at the time. We could not find any space in Lewiston. And so that's what precipitated the donated space in a very small community called Sweetwater, Idaho. And that was had about 45 people in it. And then, um, like I said, the district program at that time was limited to anything that was compatible with USDA programs. The next slide, if you could help me there. Thank you. Uh, and this did not happen without a lot of controversy. Like I said, it was kind of a painful growing process. Uh, we, were, we were the first district to move out of a co-located facility and um, USDA was very against the district moving out. Uh, they really felt that it would be um, detrimental to conservation in the county as well as to their program. Um, the district board members were also split, some of them wanting to move out, some of them not wanting to. And basically that was based on um, a lot of passion for their uh, roles and seeing that they didn't want to be the guy that uh, crashed the conservation district or made it fail. So there are some uh, hurt feelings in the move, and we spent a lot of time after the move trying to repair those feelings. So where are we at now? Because of our move, um, the district, whoops, if you could go back one. Mm -hmm. uh, back one more. There, that's it. So like I said, in 2003, the district had a $22,000 annual budget or $2 million now. We are now able to generate revenue, which is how we pay for the utilities and the facility. Um, we lease our facilities. We had a fuel facility at it, so we lease that out to a fuel company. We have, um, we have sales, um, plant nursery, and then also conservation materials. Because we have the storage, we sell things like fence posts, uh, livestock water troughs, uh, erosion control products. And then we can rent equipment, mostly our hydro seeder um, is what we rent. And then we diversified our services. Um, we have a lot of happy staff because we've been able to specialize the staff. Um, I heard somebody talk about how they have a, a wildfire kind of specialist. We have engineers, we have some biologists um, and that wasn't available to us before. Uh, we are also able to use the shop to fabricate things we need to do the job. Uh, we fabricate a lot of in-stream monitoring equipment and um, also other conservation materials we need to do demonstration projects. We're able to do demonstration projects without getting permission um, and doing trial size conservation to demonstrate out on the landscape, hey, why don't you try this? Um, and then people can drive by and look at it. We've been able to hire installation crews and we've developed a working relationship with the Idaho Department of Corrections to obtain an inmate offender crew that comes out and does a lot of the physical labor on our smaller projects or remote projects. Um, we also hired, like I said before, the crews in order to do those seasonal type of work. We have a monitoring program um, that we collect the data that's used by federal and state agencies, as well as the Nez Perce tribe. We do tours and meeting rooms and have events at our facility, um, and we can control when those occur and what types of events we have. The other thing is improved staff retention. And I can't say enough about how it's improved the professionalism of both our staff, as well as the conservation district um, board members. And that's because, um, like many of you, had a little identity crisis for a while. Now people see us as a separate entity and that we are a player in the room. And then having our own facility, we can actually meet and greet people at that facility. And it's increased a lot of partnerships with other entities that we didn't have when we were co-located. And Nez Perce County is one of them. Um, we did have a lot of learning curve and challenges. Uh, we got the building and we just moved in thinking everything was going to be great. So. The facility, um, because it was given to us, wasn't new. And so it was an aging facility and it had problems. And so maintaining that's been a challenge at times and even uh, being able to recognize the problems before they become a giant problem has been a little more difficult as well. And dealing with snow. We all live in a snow country here, 
but the snow in the parking lot and all your buildings, when it falls over your entrances and things like that, and not having the proper equipment, been really a challenge for us, and we didn't anticipate it. Uh, facility cleaning. Um, one of the biggest fights with staff is if the if the cleaning people or the contracts that we get quit, the staff have to pick up that cleaning. Nobody likes to do that. Um, so we've had a lot of problems with changeover with facility cleaning because we are located now in a community with 200 people and um, not a lot of opportunities there. Our rural location causes a little lack of network. We have to try harder, um, meaning we can't just walk next door and talk to somebody. We have to drive to Lewiston, which is about 30 miles away um, to have meetings with the most of our agency partners. Um, reception was a challenge, the same thing. We didn't have enough biz, walk-in business to have a full-time receptionist. And um, it was difficult for us to find somebody. We also had to come up with our own security plan. Now, because we own stuff, it can get stolen or vandalized or broken to. Um, and then risk management, should somebody get hurt on our facility? Uh, do we have an insurance policy in place? Um, and then we have had an incredible increased demand for services. Next slide. I think I might've clicked it too. Um, how we overcame those hurdles is we developed a facility management maintenance plan. Um, which included a water system plan. We also have a, one of the deepest wells in the area and um, it's used for emergency for fire control. Um, we worked with some of uh, the attorney general's office to develop lease templates for equipment and facility use. We started only talking to subject matter experts um, not, uh, that were in the field that we needed for our facility management. We really changed our budgeting structure. One of the things that conservation districts I don't think are very good at is identifying the facility needs and the cost associated with those. So we had to change our budget structure, start putting funds away for long-term improvements. Like I said, we partnered with the county. They provide most of our IT services. We buy the equipment and they maintain it. And um, we have some really great uh, technology because of that. We retained um, an agreement with the Idaho uh, Attorney General. And I would encourage any of you that have the opportunity to, to do that uh, to do that. That has been one of the best relationships we've done. We pay $88 an hour. They review our leasing. They give us advice on those things. And um, it's actually been a very cheap thing. Our, we spend maybe $500 a year with their services. We also retained um, Idaho County Risk Management Pool to insure us, which is only insures counties and cities and special districts, which we're qualified for. They have a cadre of professionals that also will help you develop contracts and templates and review your facility to determine how you can reduce risks and costs. Next slide. Um, what we would do differently if we started this all over is we would include the infrastructure development as part of our strategic planning. You know, we're really great at saying, oh my gosh, we need to fix water quality in the next five years in this creek. We weren't so great at saying we need a building and vehicles and all of this equipment to do it and how we're gonna pay for that. So I'd really encourage that you plan for that in your strategic planning. Um, the other thing we would do differently is we'd have a messaging system. We didn't do a very good job with our PR and outreach when we moved out so that um, we would suggest assigning one person as your point of contact um, and then also sending letters out to your clients and to your partners saying this is why we're doing it to keep that positive influence and not let the gossip or rumor mill dictate what your message is. And the other thing that we really did that was helpful uh, to us that we suggest going into it is go to send your staff to a facility management slash maintenance training courses that um, companies like, I don't want to promote one over the other, but like Fred Pryor has a two-day one. And when we sent our people to that, they came back with how to do it, but templates of how to do it. But the biggest part we got is we got um, a networked with uh, Hanford Nuclear facility, which is in Washington, but they had a facility manager there who managed 100 buildings who actually spent time with us helping us write our plan and coming up with standards and giving us all their information. Same with the Pasco airport facility people. So my point is there's people to help you network to find them and they're happy to provide their services to you. And we would also have hired a consultant instead of uh, me who wrote the original facility management plan and I'm a soil scientist. So uh, those are the things we would do differently. Um, our key success points is we have an incredible improved flexibility. We can act on anything. Um, opportunity that comes, and we really love that. Uh, we are diversified. We provide services uh, that we would have never imagined providing uh, 15 years ago when we moved out. We have an ability to act on the opportunities they arise. Um, I can't express how much the storage capabilities have provided at opportunities to our district, and one of those is we can store materials for sales. We can um, keep our equipment undercover. We have a shop, and we can work on things not in the field, in the rain, but in a shop where we can actually maintain and, and get somebody to come in and, and weld and do different activities. 
Uh, we've increased revenues from implementing our conservation programs. And I can't um, speak enough about how we've been able to enact technology improvements. Um, we have our own computer system. We're, we have drones. We have uh, a $12,000 software package that we're able to get to analyze um, you know, infrared photography. And we have staff members who are excited to be doing that kind of work. Well, Lynn, and, wow. Thank you so much for the presentation today. And, and what an example of a donated uh, uh, tax deductible donation from a major company in your area.